This actually could be a, a good um, sort of gateway into our pumpkin beer series in a in a strange way. I hope you know what I'm. Yeah, no, that totally. Yeah, that actually would uh, that would work out quite well. I think as much as I do enjoy the pumpkin beers, though, and never have had having had anything from them, I'm I'm going to say that this is probably going to outkick the coverage and go way beyond the goodness of a pumpkin. Beer. I can only hope so. Yeah, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm very I'm very excited for this. I'm glad this is this has made its way to the tasting table. I'm super excited. But for some reason, whenever people talk about this brewery. All I can think of. Yeah, yeah, I do. I do too. Let's get into that. Let's do it. We've got uh, something pumpkin related for this. Give it a shot. I'm Andrew, and I'm Keith, and we are about beverages. dot com. And the beverage we are about today is the La Roja from Jolly Pumpkin. Ah, the tie-in. That's the tie-in. Jolly Pumpkin Brewing or Brewery, maybe? Is it, what is it? No, it's Artisan Just Ales. Jolly Pumpkin Artisan Ales. That's I right. I love it. Yeah, okay. We yeah, we don't want to smite so, them down. But for some it. reason, whenever a beer and pumpkin are in the same basic sentence or paragraph, I think of pumpkin beers. But fortunately, it has nothing to do with pumpkin beer today. No, this has everything to do with one of our favorite styles. We hope. We hope so. Yes. Well, the style we do love. The style, the yes. style is one the, of our favorites. Yeah, the uh, Flanders, Flanders Red. Flanders Red. So we're talking and, sour and, and barrel aging, which yes. I mean, hello, I'm already I'm, I'm already pushing all in as soon as you say barrel aging. And yes. this is a blend, though, right? You were doing a little. Uh, I said, yeah, that? of uh, different beers aged. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 from da, da, da. like two to ten. A months? blend uh, and blended from barrels ranging to over a year in age. Oh, okay. To over a year. All so, right. yeah. So we're gonna try this. Uh, I got I picked this up at Tap and Bottle a couple of weeks ago, and um, you know they got a lot of uh, good selections down there. I wanted to buy something from Jolly Pumpkin. I read through all the labels, and after I read that, I decided that sounded like something I would be interested in. And uh, and Scott, one of the owners down there, he said that uh, that he, this one had been selling very well. So nice. So now, here we are. Jolly Pumpkin, not cheap. Most not of the, cheap. Most of the stuff they do is, like I said, barrel aged. It's all, uh, it's all uh, double fermented. It's all bottle conditioned, uh, usually unfiltered. All these kinds of things, which means dollars, dollars, dollars. So, dollar what, what are we talking for this one? Are we I, talking? It was, it was somewhere in the sixteen to eighteen dollar okay. range, I that believe that about, I paid. I mean, that's yeah. that's kind of what you're going to expect. Yeah, unfortunately, um, my receipt was emailed to me, which would be at home, and there's which uh, is no cool. stickers or anything. Yeah, the whole yeah, yeah I love that. Like when you go to the Apple Store too, they're like, "Would you like the e- receipt email?" It's like that would be great. Sure. Yeah, I do that actually. Even at the home brew shop that I go to, they do the same thing. They do it right through their. Com- you want the email to? I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, paperless. Yeah. yeah, paperless, and I'm able to keep track of everything. And I spend more money that way. Oh wait, that's right. no, I, I you almost could. Yeah, it it's probably e- would. <laughs> it is <laughs> easier to do. That might actually be one of the reasons. Just send it. it to my email yeah. address. I don't look. I'll at take those ten anyways. more and just send it to my <laughs> <Yes>. email. <laughs> and then you get home, you're like, oh my God. jolly pumpkin for everyone here. Uh, yeah, <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> yes. Uh, and actually, uh, I went to uh, their website, which we'll have a link to at aboutbeverages.com, and this was. Unbeknownst to you when you got it, and even us as we sat down here, this is one of the top 50 beers in the world that you need to try. According to? GQ. Okay. Which is uh, Gentleman's Quarterly? Yes. Okay. Not necessarily a beer magazine specifically, but a publication. It is a publication. <laughs> it is a publication. They do things with words. Yes. <laughs> Have you seen it on the league? that That's Brooklyn Decker in it. Have you seen that? She's on the league? Yeah. Wow, how did I miss that? When is she? Well, that must be the season, the ones you haven't gotten to yet. At the end of season four? She just doesn't look like her to somebody. Oh, that's that's unfortunate. Well, no, she's still attractive, but uh, but just hair's darker. Anyways, uh, it's just fun. Yeah. Brooklyn Decker is a striking woman. It would be unfortunate if they Why? What did you just say that made me think of that? I don't know. I said something. I don't know. I didn't didn't say anything like I'm about to deck anything. No? I don't know why. I, 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 I still have not the, straight out of. I have the le- of, Oh, I know what it was. Oh, Dexter, Michigan. I know what it was. No, it was something that that you said, and then the way I responded reminded me of what I like about uh, the character Taco on the show. Oh, okay. He just he just <laughs> says what he feels, yeah. and it, and it's just usually very very hysterical. Very hysterical. So, yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, you have to you have to finish watching season four. I will. I want to. And now, season, that, now that I'm finally all caught up with Breaking Bad. Now I have some free time. I can catch up with my I little can't bit. Believe, of yeah, wow! Just a month or so ago, like, like Joseph's two, like birthday, two and a half weeks. Uh, yeah, three weeks. Y- you were you were not a naysayer, but you were just like, well, I just eventually. Time. Yeah, all I had to do and was start watching a few episodes, and now I am I am completely. Actually, when this airs, the, the show is over, so I know what happened to everybody, and I loved it, or I didn't. <laughs> I don't know which <laughs> oh, right now. We got foamage. 
We're going to have to ca capture every beautiful essence and drop here. I've always wondered why that is. Maybe Eric Green or Tristan or somebody or any of one of our other uh, listeners out there who is a, a not beer knowledgeable, and maybe you know it, I, but I think we've talked about it, why sometimes when I rest a beer on its side, when I open it up, it foams up like that. And sometimes when I rest a beer on its side and open it up, it doesn't. I would initially guess, and this is completely a guess, is that if it's a beer like, like this one, that's been bottle conditioned or has still has a lot of yeast and sediment and secondary fermentation. If you're laying it on its side, you're making all the yeast okay. kind of laid down. So I don't know if that's, there might just be a little extra. I mean, they, it may have, I mean, cause they can't completely control that. I don't know if a little fermentation, extra, 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 extra. Yeah. Fermentation I don't know. Happens. It's just, some, sometimes that happens to me and I'll, uh, um, if it's one that I've had to store on, on its side in my little fridge that I'll open it up and I'll be like, this is overflow okay no it's okay or sometimes i'm like that would be the thing to look it. at to see if that does correspond to bottles that are bottle conditioned as opposed to ones that are just regularly carbonated because maybe that jostled things around when you you know picked them up and moved them back Let's around. see if i can get some yeah. more detailed uh investigation on that yeah. that is uh we've got some good bits of stuff going in there too you got bits? I got some little, uh, down at the bottom, some little floaty. Oh, yeah, there's definitely, oh, wow, okay, I hadn't seen that. Little pieces hanging this out remind, there. This you know, which is funny. what I would expect. And seeing that in there, it sort of enhances what I was going to say. It reminds me of a cup of tea, uh, like a, maybe a, More the, of like an the, Assam kind of thing? Uh, Assam or? or the fancy oolong that we used to have, sure. you know, that. And then, a little darker you know, than the oolong, but yeah. Yeah, but to see that then down there. Really huh. nice color. Speaking of, I, had, you, I know you don't use it. Oh, let's not talk about it right now. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Hopefully this does not have the uh, extreme carbonation of some of the beers we've had lately uh, in the last month or so. <laughs> we had some that were <laughs> to the extreme. They were vanilla ice with their carbonation. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, oh, wow. <laughs> I'm already getting oh, excited. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. That smells that so is, good. Wow. Oh, that's not usually the reaction I immediately, but I cannot control it. That just... You know, there's a. They need to make colognes out of this, you got or, the, or you know, <laughs> Bath and Body put this in something. Oh my God! Well, hand soap. <laughs> oh God, the foaming soap. Yeah, just walk around like this. What do your hands smell like? Flanders red. <laughs> <laughs> Flanders red. <laughs> Hotly, holy. Oh wait, not not Ned Flanders. <laughs> not Ned Flanders red. <laughs> Ned Flanders red. Oh my gosh. What were you gonna say? Sorry. <laughs> no, I was gonna say you get that that nice sort of sour fruit, but then I also there are some spices in there, but. In the right way and in the right place, underneath, after everything, just sort of as a as a um, uh, accent, as opposed to oh my god, it's spicy. And I definitely get, uh, I get definitely the oak, the oak barrel in there. I definitely get there's that little note of vanilla, a little note of sweetness at the end. Yes, you know, like it's it's that lighter vanilla. It's more of like a, a Titian vanilla, dare I say, <laughs> something like that. It's more of that lighter kind of vanilla in and a little bit of caramel and just. And a everything, of tea just, and yeah, and just everything, just kind of wrapped yeah. together. That just, I've got to go in for one more aroma. Oh my gosh, that is just uh, all right. Wow, I wonder. Uh, maybe I don't need to worry about going to California for my amazing specialty sour beers anymore. If this is what I can find at Tap and Bottle, well, we haven't we haven't finished it. Yet. I don't want to. Okay, we should just leave it, it like that. Well, because it's too amazing right now. All right, we'll go. Just ahead. leave it. Okay. It has all of those things, but it's understated, though. It's, it's not like very knock smooth. You, yeah, it's not knock you over the head, soury, puckery. Which was what this is a Flanders style, it's not necessarily a creek or a sour. So no, but it still. has those in there, and it's yeah, it's just a nice balance. I get I the the vanilla and that oaking that I picked up on. I get even more of that in the flavor. Like there's much a really nice smooth flavor. You still get the tart. You still get the malt vinegar and the little, you know, that notes of the fruit at the back. But it's almost like just as you're about to start getting, you know, uh, I would almost call it acidity, but as long as you almost as you're going to start getting that kind of thing, the oaking kind of comes through and says, "Well, easy. We're going to smooth hey, this out." Oh boy. Yeah, so as opposed to really High peaks and valleys, it's just this nice rolling it bed is. of flavor. Yeah. I thought it was going to be even a little more tart from the aroma. I which, thought so, too. Which I that's think that's saying. there, but I think it's yeah. the oaking again. Like I said, that barrel aging just really kind of... The carbonation is is perfect. Perfect. It's not overly... Uh, perfect. Yeah, overly potent. It's there. 
Right. But yeah, it's just, yeah, it keeps it lively enough. It's almost more lively right at the front of the tongue, the carbonation. As soon as it hits, it really dies down, not like some of the other stuff we'd had where it was like... Yeah, if you hold it in your mouth, it, it does give you a little, like, you know, carbo carbonation yeah. sizzle right on the front of your tongue. Yeah, but, but it's not river dance all of a sudden. No. It's not Michael Flatley going crazy on your tongue. <laughs> We've had other Michael Flatley re- <laughs> reference, haven't we? Somewhere along the line on this show. That is... Uh, wow. That's outstanding. Do you, uh, you have to see if Rachel likes it. Because then oh, yeah. you can well, go down and you out. can buy a case of this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that'll be the, that'll be interesting. Actually, that'll be really interesting. We will have to do that. Because she's de- definitely developed the appreciation for yeah, the sours. I, uh, the last four pack of Duché, I didn't have any. <clears throat> wow. Yeah. I, wow. Bought, I bought the Duchess. I bring the Duchess home. <laughs> My wife had the Duchess. <laughs> again and I again got, and again. Can, four times. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. No, she keep. I've got those two last beers from Russian River. And it's, oh. can we have that one? <laughs> well, this is definitely not a consecration, but no, pretty good. Oh man, it's, it it's, doesn't have it, the super depth that the consecration has. That extra. Well, the the consecration is a little more layer sharp. Like I said, it's got more of the, the vinegar. The wine, the, forefront. And, the yeah. wine is in there, and those kinds of things. This is, whew, this is delicious. Yeah, and this is a year round, which I'm. I don't can't remember if we mentioned that earlier, but that's I awesome. don't know if we did. I know I have it in the tasting notes, but I'm not sure okay. if we did mention it or not. Mm. But yeah, if they're doing this year round, wow! I wonder if it changes, like from or if they, well, you know, taste blend. profile. Yeah, I wonder if you know. It probably, I would think it does. I mean, I'm obviously, sure they blend to try and always keep get a back flavor to the profile, same, right? To get yeah. close to the same profile, but especially any of these beers that are bottle conditioned and all the stuff that they go through, they're always going to be different from year to year. I mean, right. even the, you know, any anything. It's did it get more microbes this year? It got a little bit less. This one's a little more tangy. This one's a little more. Th- you know, and you right work with it as much as you can but yeah wow that's that's delicious that's a wonderful and uh so we are going to wrap this up so that we can just sit here and enjoy the rest enjoy. of the beer because it's right. not going to waste in any way shape or form and oh, it no. also should not go to waste is all the wonderful content that we have at aboutbeverages.com which is where you can find the tasting notes and uh where this hits on the recommendation scale this wonderful beer from jolly pumpkin artisan ales that's it. I don't want. I don't have anything else to say. That's a but no. If you're, <laughs> if you're check it out. If you're a fan of this style, you need to you need to pick one of these up. Head I down agree. to Tap and Bottle, or you know wherever or, your local or, purveyor may be of, of Jolly Pumpkins. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But whether we like it or not, you should give it a shot.